For most of the, my experience playing Tarkov over the last couple of years, the 545 AKs have always kind of been a joke. They've got a slow fire rate, their ammo isn't very good, especially later in wipe, and they just never had a place in my play style or how I uh, played the game. But then 1212 came around, and I had a raid where I tried a meta one, I had killed a guy and uh, he had dropped it, so I just decided to run it. I made a couple of tweaks to make it fit me, and I was honestly quite pleasantly surprised. Now keep in mind, I ran this thing super meta. It's as expensive as any M4 or any other high-end gun you would run out there. But I've run some of the other more budget builds along the lines of the 545 AK, and they actually work pretty well. And that's kind of what it boils down to. You're spending two, three times as much money to get 10% more performance. Now this isn't because they made 545 AKs better. Essentially, it's because they made every gun worse with the recoil changes. So when you combine the low recoil and the slower fire rate, it makes handling the AK-74 ends the 545 AKs are quite a bit easier than some of the other guns out there now. On top of that, with the ammo bands and stuff, the mid-tier ammos, you can still buy those for this 545s. The parts are relatively cheap and easy to get a hold of, and all of these allow you to really lean into the strengths of this gun, which is basically a mid-tier engagement uh, a weapon system. If you get into up-close fights, you're still going to fail against SMGs, and it just doesn't have the damage out at long ranges thanks to the new ballistic system as well, where damage fall-off happens. But enough jibber jabber, let's get right into the builds so we can show you guys what you have. Uh, sorry for the cold, I'm over it, but I still sound like crap, still need to make videos. So hopefully it's not too bothersome for you guys. So first things first, let's get into the different 545 AKs out there. You have AK-74M, AK-74, AK-105, and the AK-74N. Now, I always use the AK-74N. The stats don't get a lot of difference between that and the AK-74. If you look here, the stats are basically the same you get one more order out of the ak-74n some people say you use the ak-74 because it's cheaper once you get mechanic loyalty level three though you can buy an ak-74n from him uh, with no parts on it base model for 25k 26k this is what i always go off of it's easy it's cheap and you don't have to worry about durability or missing parts or anything like that now as far as the other ones the ak-74m if you look here there is also very little difference in these uh you get a little bit less recoil out of that and a little bit more ergo but the problem is you can't put the zukov stock on the back of this so the m is an option if you're not using the Z zukov stock or some of the other stocks for the budget builds uh but that is the main difference with the m is it does not have the ability to attach the bunch of other stocks that you can on the n it's also craftable uh you know in your hideout in your workbench uh you can craft an ak-74n see here weapon part two of these attachments you can get from proper an hour and 10 minutes later you get yourself a brand new ak-74n that you can use to build as well and then on top of that there's also a barter with proper at loyalty level two uh takes five apollos not really worthwhile right now because they're kind of ex the cigarettes are expensive because of some other barters uh but later down on the wipe this might be the way to go if those get down into like the six thousand or cheaper range so let's get into the actual specific build now uh all of you been anxious for this is the absolute minimum recoil you can get on these guns and still be practical you can technically get down a little bit lower uh if you use the night scope optic you know i can show you that real quick um let me go into the preset here and actually show you this, this build right here is 34 uh uh ergonomics and 36 recoil now if you throw on the 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 night scope thingy we'll put on a different dust cover here real quick which will actually lose us a little bit of recoil let me get the stats so we're 36 we'll put on this we go to 37 and then if you put this silly night scope on here um because it has negative recoil you actually get down to 30. But this is super impractical. Um, there's not a lot that makes sense with this build. Uh, even this one here, I don't like because you're training a ton of ergo, but this is the minimum recoil. And it boils around using one, this waffle suppressor, uh, which is extraordinarily expensive. These things run about 100,000, sometimes more, sometimes a little bit less. Uh, that gets you a lot of your recoil. That goes on top of the uh, reactor muzzle brake. And then I have an RK2 on here as well, which is really expensive, max recoil reduction. Uh, I'm using the Mesa, which goes on with a, um, a uh, the ME4, uh, this little buffer tube attachment. And then you put the buffer tube on, the Mesa buffer tube and that, and that gets you some more recoil. And then after that is the uh, Troy uh, front handguard. Now the Troy isn't too expensive, but the four point tow H rails are really expensive. And this is where the meta gear kind of, you have to have max traders to do this comes in. Uh, Cause if you don't, you're paying 62,000 just for the rail versus 2000 if you have level four mechanic. 
but that gets you there. Now, the build that I actually run um, is this here, and it's got a couple of adjustments. First off, I run the Zukov. Uh, you get, you trade a couple of uh, recoil for a ton of ergo, which is just worth more to me. One or two recoil on this build just does not matter that much, um, which is where a couple of these choices come in, and to get that little bit more ergo and to make it a little bit cheaper and more accessible. After that, instead of using the RK2, I go with the Canted RK1, the B25U with the RK1 on it. Uh, this is because it changes on the ergo. As you can see here, um, we'll look at the ergo differences and recoil differences. You are 1% uh, on the recoil, but your swing is 10 on ergo. That's huge. Now, this only changes the recoil, like again, one or two uh, on it, depending on how you have it built. But that 10 ergo is worth it for me. Again, do what you want to do. But then we have this, uh, the waffle suppressor on here, which is pretty much almost half the cost of the entire build. I've been using the, the Romeo um, as well at, for my sights, but use what you want to use. Uh, and then you've got the plus three ergo knurled charging handle which is kind of new this wipe. It is new this wipe, it's not kind of new. And then the AGS 74 Pro uh, plus 14 Ergo. Um, you don't have to use that. There's a couple other options in here. This thing can be really expensive. Even if you have traders, uh, this grip is not the cheapest grip out there, uh, but you're still spending 50, 60,000 if you don't have traders. And then a step below this build is the AK 74 and budget build that I've put together here. Now this one, you can get most of it with level three traders, but even without traders, the prices aren't too expensive. So for example, the, uh, the, the stock here, the pro mag Archangel, it's 40,000 to 20,000 if you have traders, but you can get it off mechanic loyalty level three. Um, if you don't have mechanic loyalty level three, your next best bet after this is uh, just to take the standard stock on here. And I'll just, I'll put it on here real quick and you'll see how little of a difference it is. So we're, we're 52 and 147. If you just stick the standard polymer stock on here and put a rubber butt pad on it, um, you can see you're not all that much of a difference. 55, 155 uh, versus the uh, up four, which is 52, 147. So not a huge difference just to go with the rubber butt pad um, if you want a little bit more budget out of it. Uh, next up is the RK1, um, a little bit more available, still can be expensive. If you can't run the RK1, you have some options out there that don't hurt you a whole lot. Um, you know, you can go the dynamic skeletonized foregrip or my favorite for a very long time before I had other stuff was just the RVG Black. Um, easily accessible and a really good foregrip to run on there if you can't use the RK1. Uh, the PSW CQ, CQB uh, 74 is the best muzzle brake for the price. Now, this is just if you don't have the JMAC unlocked. Obviously, if you have the JMAC, use that. But this thing here, you can get for 15, 16,000, basically the same as if you have traders and the effect isn't huge. Again, we're budget here. Now, as far as the pistol grip, I used put the saw on here. Uh, again, you have lots of choices, but the saw is available at Peacekeeper level two, pretty cheap. And even if you don't have it there, it's cheaper on the market. Now, one of the big difference between the meta build and the this more budget build is the Troy versus the VS combo. Now, I'm going to show you these things here and why they aren't a huge difference from one another. Let me get them all taken apart and get their parts uh, off of here so they're not affecting the stats in any way. Um, you'll see that the Troy has uh, a little bit more recoil reduction. So you're, you're negative 4.5 versus negative four, but the, uh, the, the VS combo actually has higher ergo. So a lot of people that are running meta builds per se, quote unquote meta builds, are still running the VS combo because they want that more ergo and they're not trading hardly any recoil. Now with the Troy, you do get better heat um, and a better durability burn stat uh, than you do on the VS, the VS combo, but that's such fringe stuff. I wouldn't even worry about it too much. Uh, the big difference is, is the grips though, right? So the, I'm sorry, the four grips that you can put on here because this thing takes Cas V6, which is cheap and available, but it's not the only one you can use. Uh, when you go to, we'll go link search this here, and I have everything unlocked, but you can use the Strike Industries or uh, the six inch rail or the VS combo. And even the Strike Industries isn't too bad. The Cas V is available at Peacekeeper Loyalty Level 2, and the other one, which one was it, is available at Mechanic 3. The Strike Industries is available at Mechanic 3. So you have access to these a lot quicker. Whereas again, the cars is on Mechanic Loyalty Level 4, or, you know, 50, 60K. So that's, that's really what it boils down to, is that one part right there in the difference between these two builds. Now we'll put these side by side and, and shoot them as I talk here, uh, the two guns, the we'll put the rip saw on the left and the budget build on the right. So you can see the difference between these. We're just shooting BT ammo out of them. So there's, there's not anything funny with the ammo here. It's just all BT ammo. And you can see the recoil difference between these. It's, it, 
it's not nothing, but it's not the end of the world either. That first jump is a little bit bigger on the budget gun, but once it settles back in, you know, you can see the patterns don't change all that much. So is it worth it if you have max traders to go up to the more meta build? I think so, yes. Uh, especially because of the hiding the muzzle flash and some of the other stuff you're dealing with, uh, with that really good suppressor. Uh, but on top of that, uh, that little extra bit of control, the further out you get, the more how the more you can uh, hit your targets. Now, I just want to point out some other things for you guys here, uh, just to point it out so you know if it's available. There are quite a few grips available uh, with good ergo. As you can see here, these two are plus 12. Um, they're a little bit higher level. They're a little bit harder to get a hold of, but they're out there. Then you have the RK3, which is also 12, um, a little bit easier to get to. You have to do a couple of tasks. There's a ragman task on Lighthouse you got to do to unlock this or skier task. I can't remember which one. You got to go to a helicopter and then you got to get the folder of intel and turn that in and then it unlocks the rk3 but aside from all of those that are harder to get and more expensive you know like the moe ak is thirty-three thousand, and the score piece is probably 30 40 000, and the rk3 is 30 or forty thousand. this us palm is kind of like a hidden gem a lot of people don't realize it and it's quite a bit cheaper because there's not a lot of demand uh with that, even without traders you can get it for 15 20 000 and it's available on level three peacekeeper as you can see right here uh for 70 dollars so keep that in mind that there's always more options to get ergo and like we had talked before you're not stepping all down all that much going to a saw it's plus 11. so you're talking about one ergo difference and usually half the price um it can kind of go around and you don't have to use the black saw grip you can use the the tan one as well so you're seeing here 9 10 11 000 and all you're losing is one ergo so it's a choice you can make there now the jmac is the best uh muzzle brake to use but it can be really expensive um most of the time uh, you're, you're you know you're talking 50 60 70 80 000 for this uh if you don't have traders and you don't get it as you can see here until mechanic four so it's a late late unlock and if you don't have it that's where this budget build changes where you use this pws now as far as suppressors there's not a huge difference here if you don't want to run the meta waffle suppressor these are your two best choices and they're essentially the same the tgp has a 10.5 percent recoil reduction versus the 10 percent on the pbs they're both negative 25 recoil their durability burns all that's the same but for whatever reason the pbs has a better cooling which just means it'll cool off faster after you heat it up so more sustained fire uh and that's really about it so there's always options just keep that in mind it's good to go play around in your gun builds uh and look at options the last thing we're going to talk about here is ammo um if you're not interested in it don't blame you but there's some very interesting stuff with this gun when it comes to ammo now, I kind of have them broke up how they're classed, right? You have your, we'll say your C tier ammo, if you will, PS, PP, BP. Uh, BP could be called maybe a C plus or a B minus tier ammo, but we'll put it in C. Uh, then you have your B ammo, which is your BT. And then you have your, your A ammo, or even you want to call it S tier ammo, you, whatever, however you want to tier it. But the best ammo, you know, your 7 and 40 BS and PBPS. 7 and 40 is extraordinarily hard to get. BS and PBS not too hard kind of depends on where you run and if you kill scav bosses or raiders and stuff like that you'll get you'll end up with this stuff um, as well but uh, the 7 and 40 is just a real special round we'll get into that in a second but for your mid-tier ammo you can buy this from the flea market which is not possible with a lot of other guns now BT has 37 as I'm making this video anyways has 37 pen and 44 damage that means it's going to very quickly get through class four it can eat up certain class fives pretty quickly um and it will struggle on class sixes but we're not seeing that because of the new armor changes we really don't see that uh so it's a pretty decent round to actually run um you know comparable to like let's say 856a1 uh which you can't buy on the market you have plenty of access to bt and even if you don't or it's getting too expensive for you you can stack your mags you can put pp or bp in the bottom and top load them with bp and save a little bit of money there if you really want to now one thing that eagle neck has over bs obviously besides its penetration is that you can craft it so you have a little bit more access to it that way um and to be honest with you if you can run b or uh, eagle nick there's not a lot of reason to run bs stat wise the difference between them just doesn't warrant running bs if you have eagle nick uh, eagle nick can get right through class six armor bs can't uh, Eagle Nick has just a little bit less damage, but that little damage chain doesn't matter all that much in fights because both of them are so small already. And it's unfortunate, uh, BS is just kind of this cruddy round that's in an awkward spot that it doesn't really have a home. Now, seven and 40, you know, this is kind of a unicorn round. It has 44 pen, 52 damage, which is actually really high. 
you know you don't even get higher than that until you get down to some of the flesh rounds that have like 15 or 20 pen whereas this still has 44 which means it will get through class five and you know three four maybe five shots and kill people very quickly but it also has this fancy number of negative 20 recoil and I'm not gonna get into the debate in this video about you know if it's a percentage or a hard number. It's a hard number, feel free to argue with me, but um, the uh, uh, we're not gonna get any more depth in it. It's a hard number reduction. So if your gun is 40 recoil and you put this in there, it's 20 recoil while it's shooting it. And it's drastic, I've used it in raid. You can tell when, you're, when you run out of seven and 40 and you hit another round in your mag because your gun definitely starts to jump quite a bit more. And if it wasn't for the fact that this round is so extraordinarily rare, uh, it would be broken. But again, it's kind of a unicorn round. I think in all of the this wipe of 1212, I've found maybe 120 rounds of this. So when I use it, I'm usually only stacking like 10 rounds on top of a mag. Now the BP, PP, PS ammo, uh, there's not a huge difference between all three of these. PS on the low end is 27 pen, BP is 35 pen. Uh, when it comes to class four armor, the BP is obviously gonna get through it faster but not by much over the PP ammo. And PP is just a little bit better than PS. So you've got this incremental increase. All three of these are acceptable to put in the bottom of your mag, or at least I think so. So if I'm running a 60, if I'm running one of these 6L31s, I usually have my bottom 15 or 20 rounds of cheap ammo. So one, that when I die, uh, I'm not losing a ton of more expensive ammo. But two, once you, if you're dumping a mag, dumping into somebody with one of these 60 round mags, by the time you get to the bottom of the mag, you're usually looking for flush damage anyways, because they've gotten far enough away from you that you're not landing good square hits on their armor, or you've shredded their armor enough that the flush damage is going to be the king anyways. And that's my take on it. And that's why I get into stacking mags. Um, I like sticking all sorts of ammo in my mags. I'll stick a cheap ammo in the bottom, you know, a mid-tier ammo in the middle. I'll have 10 rounds of really good ammo, and then I'll stick 7 and 40, you know, 5 to 10 rounds on top of that. And if I don't have 7 and 40, I, I know some of you have probably been looking, wondering why in the hell I have US ammo over here. I've actually been running a lot of US ammo on top of my mags. Now, it's only 5 rounds. That's all I'll put on top of it. And it might even end up being less than that. I haven't had enough chance to test it. I've been running five, but I suspect four or maybe even three rounds might be acceptable for this. And the big reason is, is the massive recoil reduction it gives you. Some of these other rounds, when you shoot at somebody, if you're aiming center mass, your second, your third, your fourth round are just gonna sail over their head. You're not gonna hit anyway. So it doesn't matter what ammo you're using. You don't hit them. I would rather put shots on target with shitty ammo you know, maybe hit, crack their face shield, maybe get lucky and land a face shot, which then it doesn't matter what the pen is and uh, win the fight that way versus, you know, my fifth or sixth shot coming back down and then finally landing shots. So that's what I've been doing. I've been running anything from BS and Eagle Nick and BT through most of the mag, top five rounds US if I don't have seven and 40 and it's worked really well. And we'll just show you a quick little clip here. You can see the difference. This is this is the rip saw. This is kind of the, my meta build. Um, on the left, we will shoot a full round of US. And then on the right, we'll shoot a full round of BT. And you can see the difference in the recoil patterns here. Now in this clip, um, let's put the BT on the left. So BT's on the left here. And on the right, we're gonna shoot uh, five rounds of US on the top and then go into BT. And we'll sync them together so you can see the difference, kind of play them slow-mo. And as you can see here, you see how much of a difference that is with those first couple of rounds and getting those on target. For me, it's a big deal. For you, it might not be. And it is kind of a pain in the ass to load mags like this, so it's not for everybody. But it's something I wanted to bring up and it really adds to the power of this gun. But that's pretty much it, guys. That wraps up the video. I hope it was helpful. Um, I know these are a lot different than most people do their build guides, but I like to get into the details and I like to explain why you do stuff so that you can make better decisions for yourself and not just copy paste what I make and I build for me. But make sure you hit subscribe and like if the video warranted it. And I wish you the best of luck in your raids. We'll see you in Tarkov.